amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere has increased significantly over the last 50 years. But forests can play an important role in reversing that trend. I'm Terry Collins from Collins Pine Company, a family-owned forest products business with operations in four states. Our family has been in the lumber business since 1855, when my great-grandfather started operating sawmills in western Pennsylvania. Collins Pine manages over 300,000 acres of timberland in Oregon, California, and Pennsylvania, and has been committed to sustainable forest management since 1940. We were the first forest products company to have our forests environmentally certified according to the standards of the Forest Stewardship Council. In 1999, we joined the Climate Savers program, which was organized by the World Wildlife Fund, and started to track our greenhouse gas emissions as part of that program. When we burn fossil fuel, including coal, diesel, gasoline, propane, or natural gas, we're transferring carbon from the Earth's crust into the atmosphere, where it picks up oxygen and accumulates as carbon dioxide. Burning a gallon of diesel releases six pounds of carbon but that picks up enough oxygen to add 22 pounds of CO2 to the atmosphere. We refer to these as fossil fuels because back during the Jurassic age, the carbon contained in these materials was part of the biosphere or the living zone of the planet. Over millions of years, a lot of carbon that was contained in plant and animal structures became sequestered in the earth. Returning much of that carbon to the biosphere when it's been trapped in the earth for millions of years could have consequences that we would not be able to predict. When we burn biomass or plant material, which is replaced by new growth, the carbon that is released is pulled from the atmosphere back into plant material. This creates a cyclical pattern whereby carbon is cycled within the biosphere. When we burn fossil fuel, on the other hand, we create a linear pattern whereby carbon is transferred one way from the Earth's crust into the atmosphere. Like all industries that produce products from raw materials, the forest products industry consumes electricity and burns fossil fuel, resulting in carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere. The amount of CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere increased by 22% from 1960 to 2010. But our industry touches on this issue in three other ways as well. The world's forests are a huge reservoir of carbon, containing one and a half times the amount of carbon that is in the Earth's atmosphere. The forest products industry can play an important role in maintaining healthy forests to prevent the release of carbon from forest depletion. Many sawmills produce energy by burning their wood wastes to generate steam and electricity. When energy from burning fossil fuel is replaced by energy from burning biomass, as long as the biomass removed from the forest is replaced by forest growth, the carbon emissions are cycled back into the forest through photosynthesis, rather than being transferred from the Earth's crust to the atmosphere. Finally, by producing more locally grown lumber for the domestic market, we're reducing emissions that would result from transporting lumber from other countries. Over the last two decades, the United States has imported 35% of the softwood lumber that we consume and 16 times the volume that we export. The forest products industry has a special role to play in reducing atmospheric CO2 by maintaining healthy forests, generating biomass energy, producing locally grown wood products, and reducing carbon emissions. But all industries can make a difference through more efficient processing, reducing transportation and travel, wasting less energy, and using less energy intensive materials. We challenge other companies to join us in reducing our collective carbon emissions. Efforts in this regard can lower unit costs, inspire employees and customers, secure our businesses for the long term, and benefit future generations.